What's up everybody? How's it going today? Uh, this is just a quick video. I wanted to make a book suggestion. Uh, I read a book from Oliver Sacks, you know, last week. I got really into it. I made a video talking about it. It was called Hallucinations. It got me really thinking about these things. And uh, I ordered another one of his books off eBay the other day because they're so cheap. <laughs> um, for used books these days. It seems like nobody's reading anymore. And it's called Musicophilia. And uh, it's called Tales of the Music in the Brain. And it's based on his research with people who have had various, uh, let's just say, uh, issues with music. And not just hallucinations. Some people hear music and they hear it so clearly it's right there. But other people have issues where they actually can't process music properly. For example, some people can't distinguish between particular notes, so it sounds like a big mess to them. So when they go to a concert, all the people have explained it like clanging pots and pans, or you know, a uh, a, a horse-drawn carriage over cobblestone, or washing machines crashing around, that kind of stuff. It, it, it and their brains process it differently. And there are also people who see music as colors. And yes, there are kids who are born with, uh, let's just say, uh, it's difficult to say that they're born with a disposition towards music, because there's there's a, and the reason I'm making this video is because I always grew up with the assumption that, uh, as a musician myself, I can hear music in my head. I can hear an entire symphony playing if I want to, or uh, a song with the lyrics in the proper tone, and I have pretty good tone, but... I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself by any means an absolute, um, the absolute pitch is what they call it, where they know, you know, any tone just by hearing it. Uh, I have to think about it for a minute, but I can generally associate it, and, and I, I never thought of it as being a good musical ear, because I played guitar and bass, and, and I very much enjoy acoustic, and uh, I realized as growing up, I would always say, hey, if you really want to learn how to play guitar, or you really want to learn music, all you have to do is just play it and try it. And to an extent, this is true. A per certain part of your brain does develop as in musicians very strongly, and it's different than other arts. Painters don't have it, and, and other, other forms of art, they don't have this particular association with a part of the brain which actually grows. It becomes larger on one side. Uh, it's, uh, I can't remember the name, but it's, it's interesting to think that music is such an important part of us that that music is something that is hard to understand why we even enjoy it. And uh, it's just become what we do. And we could say, well, we heard birds sing, and you know, you'd hear drips of water, and eventually humans would develop rhythm, the rhythm of nature, and, and copy that. But that doesn't quite explain the depth of it. And uh, this book, I think, really lays out some of that for people to uh, kind of look at it from another perspective and realize some people out there really don't like music for a reason and they might not even know why because it might not sound the sound sound the same to them and they might wonder why people like music so much some people can they can actually notice tone changes but but not uh tonal changes within the same octave so a very light f to an f sharp wouldn't necessarily uh change in their minds and some of these people are musicians and they still continue to battle with their various conditions um, there are cases of people who play piano, and at the same time they hear other music going in the background. It's like a it's it's as if somebody's playing a radio in their ear all the time, and they have to compete with that and learn to drown it out. And over time, the brain can learn to adapt. But these are otherwise completely capable, normal people: teachers, philosophers, professors who just have uh, they hear music that isn't there. And for some people, it can repeat and it can repeat really quickly. Some people, it's just like little portions of a song over and over and over, and they call it their jukebox or their iPod in their head. And they can't control it, but sometimes they can change the song. It's as if they can't turn it on and off, but they can change the song, and that would be, uh, that would be tough. But um, uh, many of the songs correlate to people uh, and what they're thinking. So, for example, a certain song will come up, and the lyrics might relate to your subconscious and what you're thinking, and that's a different type. Uh, and something that should be further explored, in my opinion. But, uh, I don't know, I, as a musician, I love hearing music and I love thinking about music, but I can't imagine being overwhelmed by music all the time like that, and that must be, be rough. So, um, I'm saying this because I've made a video in the past where I said, how can people not like music? I just don't understand it. But now I'm starting to understand it. It's, you know, some people don't like music because their brains don't perceive it the same way. And uh, so, anyway, a little video about music.
what do y'all think about music? Is it something that's just inherent within us? Is it something that we learn or something that we use to mimic nature? And uh, why is it so important to so many of us?